Okay, John, welcome here in uh, in Netherlands Thank in, you for uh, in me. the Amsterdam Arena. It's the crowdfunding day. You just landed uh, three three hours ago at Schiphol, <laughs> so I guess you see a lot of beautiful stuff uh, of this, this country. Yeah, uh, there's uh, there is some nice land between here and the airport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you've got uh, some days left. Uh, yeah. So you so you're working at at, at Kickstart. So uh, mm -hmm. what are you doing precisely? I'm director of strategy and insights. I work mostly with our outreach team, which uh, is a team of 16 people who are specialists in the various categories on Kickstarter. We have 15 categories of projects that we support from film, technology, design, music, publishing. Uh, and I help our outreach leads sort of think about their strategy, the, think about their strategy and growing their community, reaching out to creators uh, and organizations in their category. And how many times do you, uh, so, sorry, uh, how many year, years are you now working for Kickstarter? Only about a year and two months. Okay. Mm -hmm. So quite fresh in the in the team. Fairly fresh, but we've been growing a lot, so I'm already kind of a veteran. Uh, and <laughs> Kickstarter is only about six years old. So yeah, that's right. It's also in a different perspective. And uh, what about because Kickstarter is it started in in the US mm -hmm. and then they start growing. They're now live in the Netherlands for about a year, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what is your growth strategy uh, 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 when entering a new country? So we're entering. Uh, we're launching it in Germany and France currently. Uh, we really want to make sure that we reach out to great creators. Uh, we frequently have creators in these countries that have used Kickstarter in the past, so we talk to them and, and find uh, creators and projects that inspire us and we think will inspire our you know, uh, community of eight and a half million backers. Uh, really looking to, to find a balance of sort of invention and innovation with culture and art uh, that's going to be something that's, that resonates with the people in that country. And um, uh, what are your biggest challenges in, in, in entering in, in, in a new country, like uh, culture or more practical uh, challenges? I think the, they're both significant, always. I think the, the more practical challenges are always the toughest, to be honest. So things like uh, tax regulations or spam laws and uh, localization of the product, so translating it into a foreign language uh, is a very substantial undertaking. And then building out a team that can support that language and support that community. Uh, and everything you do going forward from that point, once you translate a website, every change you make has to be done in other languages as well. So it changes the way an entire company operates. And, and do you also hire uh, local people for, for, for doing that? Uh, we do. Uh, so we have people on the ground in, uh, right now in Germany, uh, France, and the UK. Okay, and not in, not, not in the Netherlands yet? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> and uh, think about uh, the, uh, the other practical things, like uh, with the last time I, I, I went to Kickstarter uh, uh, trying to back Dutch projects, it wasn't able to, uh, I wasn't able to pay with the uh, more Dutch payment providers, mm -hmm. so you need a, a, a credit card. I think it's, it's also a quite a big be, uh, threshold for people to, to, to enter. Uh, at, at what way are you looking to this kind of more practical uh, Challenges. Yeah, so expanding our payment options is something that we're currently working on. Uh, today, uh, I think probably about six hours ago, we started accepting uh, SIPA direct debit, which is very commonly used in Germany. Uh, so that's the first step in that direction. But we're certainly looking uh, at all the different ways we can make backing easier for people everywhere in the world. I will say that uh, you know Kickstarter is such an international platform that you know we see. For, for the creators that have launched out of the Netherlands, more, a little more than half of the money raised by creators in the Netherlands comes from outside the Netherlands. Uh, and that's pretty typical of our international markets. So it's, it's been interesting seeing how the, the money raised, just like you're not restricted to the borders that you're in. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, but in, at the other side, the, uh, Actually, uh, your early bird uh, 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 donors are, are most of the time uh, uh, people you already know in your That's own true. <laughs> local. Uh, you do want to get your base <laughs> in there yeah, and yeah, established. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, what I'd share because uh, Kickstarter is, is, is growing really fast. You say uh, you were working there for over a year mm -hmm. and you're one of the veterans. So that's also <laughs> says about how, how many people are, are entering the company. Mm -hmm. And what way make, uh, do you make sure that uh, the culture and the DNA of the company is, 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 is good uh, while growing this fast? Mm -hmm. like, I think it's quite a challenge. It is a challenge. Uh, and the, the founders have done a good job of, I think, steering that ship and finding people that share the same values and principles as, as they do. Uh, it's a very uh, mission-driven company, and everyone that works there is is very well aligned in terms of trying, you know, really just being passionate about cre creation and creative agency and helping people make things. Uh, 
finding those people takes time and we're careful about who we bring into the company, but uh, as long as we are finding people that fit that uh, and that same mold and are passionate about those things, then so far, so good. It'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> and like here, we, we're, we're at the crowdfunding day. Mm -hmm. We look in the Netherlands, uh, the fastest growing crowdfunding part is the easy, easy lending part. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, are you also uh, into the lending and equity uh, in the future? Uh, right now, our plans are not to build out that capability, uh, mostly because the, the dynamic between a supporter or contributor to a project when it's uh, lending or equity mm -hmm. is very different than what we see with rewards-based crowdfunding. So with lending and equity, you're, you know, someone's coming into a project because they want to make, they want to return. They want to, uh, it's an investment and they want to see profit on that. With reward-based crowdfunding, it's, it's much more aligned in, in the feeling that we're coming together to see this thing exist in the, in the world. Uh, and to us, that's a, it's a kind of a fragile thing that we are working every day to kind of protect, mm -hmm. and um, we don't want that to be confused by having simultaneously, hey, I'm going to make money off of this, yeah. also participate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's really, uh, uh, I think uh, that's the good uh, decision. Uh, uh, like I also uh, interviewed Danae from from Indiegogo, mm -hmm. and they said, okay, uh, uh, at the moment it is possible to do equity-based crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it, and I was really surprised about it because it, it's 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 a complete different ball game. Mm -hmm. and, and also, there's also a big uh, challenge in, in, in uh, uh, informing and, and educate uh, yeah. the investors and the project owners. Uh, and what way, because a couple of years ago, I think there, uh, there was a blog uh, uh, on Kickstarter. Kickstarter is not a store, mm -hmm. but I guess many people still do see Kickstarter <laughs> as a store. Uh, and what way do you uh, educate uh, 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 the backers and also the project owners mm -hmm. in what Kickstarter is? Yeah, we provide a lot of support to creators to support their own community of backers and making sure that they communicate uh, what this is. And we really do, you know, one of our rules is that projects have to be presented in a clear and honest way. Uh, so being transparent is a big part of how Kickstarter is run. We are very transparent as a company. Uh, we share statistics, a lot of statistics. You can go on Kickstarter and, and see everything that is going on. Uh, and we ask our creators uh, to do the same. And as long as people are being transparent and honest and clear, mm -hmm. uh, people get it. Uh, but it does take education and, and for, on the part of both Kickstarter and the creators on yeah. the platform. Yeah, I really believe that. And when you look at the success rate, because uh, there's always a challenge uh, when you have a platform in, okay, mm -hmm. how low are we going to make the threshold that the people can, can enter? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the way, when you lower the threshold, then also uh, I think that the, 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 the rate of uh, projects not being successful mm -hmm. uh, uh, is, is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and the other side, you also have to look about, okay, how are we going to protect uh, our donators? Mm -hmm. um, and what a way uh, do you make decisions on what you're going to, to, to screen or not uh, 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 when entering new projects? Well, Kickstarter is always uh, not screened for quality or whether or not we like a project, but whether it meets our rules. And we do screen to make sure that, again, that like it fits into our categories, that this is a, a creative project that someone's doing, uh, and that it is presented in a way that's going to be fair to backers. So when you're talking about more complex projects, that means that they have to show a working prototype. Mm -hmm. They can't use photorealistic renderings because you know, people may not understand that that's not a thing that actually exists in the real world. Yeah. Um, and so we aren't screening to be like, oh, this is going to be successful or not. That falls to, I think, just education about how to do a campaign. And people are understanding more and more about what crowdfunding is, how to do it. There's still a lot of work to be done, and we're working hard to, to provide creators with a lot of information in a lot of different ways uh, through video tutorials and uh, educational resources. There's now a, a area on the site called Campus that's available only to creators at the moment uh, where they can ask each other questions about how to run a successful campaign. Um, just providing as many opportunities for that sort of education and as many ways as possible because people learn in different ways. Yeah. We do see that. Uh, you know, if projects that get at least 25 backers are successful 75% of the time. So mm -hmm. that's a really high success rate and points to the fact that if you do the work to establish that base, uh, you're a lot of the way there. Yeah. Um, and then you can build from there. Yeah, and, and, and do, do uh, project owners also build up a reputation score uh, uh, in, in the projects they did uh, in the past? There's no 
like numerical score that you could go to someone's profile and see. Uh, but you do see reputations, right? Like, and, and reputation, people build up a reputation as a great creator who communicates well and thoroughly. And that's the most important thing, is just to be, again, transparent as you, you know, do a Kickstarter project. If you're successful, it's staying in touch with the backers and telling them what's going on. Because um, no matter what happens, backers are usually very supportive mm -hmm. uh, as long as they, again, feel, feel included in the process and know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And uh, what steps can we expect in, 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 in Netherlands for the near future? Uh, uh, will there be an office? Will there also be a ideal integration? I think it's really important for, for the Dutch party owners and backers. Uh, can you share uh, some insights about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we Not are all just five. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking uh, at all the different ways we can expand our payment options to make things easier for backers. Um, I can't say any firm plans regarding specifically the Netherlands. But you got the wish list, I guess. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I wish we could do uh, immediately. It's just you know, limited resources and prioritization. Yeah. Um, we are focusing a lot on Europe right now. Uh, and so we are introducing a lot of features that just make it easier for that transaction to happen to communicate across borders. Yeah. Uh, so that translating the site, uh, SEPA direct debit. We have closed captioning now for our videos, which is a, actually a really beautiful tool that helps both people that are uh, deaf or don't speak the language that someone's doing the video in. Um, and we also do currency conversion now for US yeah. backers. So yeah. uh, US backers, as of this morning, uh, <laughs> looking at any international project on Kickstarter, will see it's all of the sort of reward tiers and the goal and all that stuff converted to US dollars. Yeah. Um, so they can just understand exactly yeah. what's going on a little yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's important, especially when you look at the European markets. It's, it's really, uh, it is your, uh, they call it Europe, but in the end, there are just about 24. I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. different countries with their own language uh, right. uh, and everything. So that's, uh, but we got the euro. That's, that's something. That's true. <laughs> Not everyone has the has the euro. I mean, there's the kroner and yeah, um, yeah, that's right, that's right. It's yeah. still it's and, and and when you look at global Kickstarter, uh, uh, are there also some new things you can expect in the near future? Uh, what's going on? What you already can share, maybe as an exclusive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, nothing I can share that we haven't already. Okay. Um, what are the new uh, things that you uh, have already shared? Th the big things are that we announced yesterday that we are open for creators in France to start building projects, and they will be able to they'll start launching their projects in a couple of weeks. Uh, already, it looks like we'll have some amazing projects uh, in France. That I'm very excited to see launch. Yeah. Um, and then today we had our first German projects go live. We have some amazing projects in Germany. Um, Me Too, which launched a few hours ago, is already over 40,000 euros. Um, it's a really beautiful and elegant way of kind of boiling water. Okay. Uh, it basically turns anything into a tea kettle. Yeah. Uh, so you can just put your glass on it and drip this little, drop this little wand in and it'll boil the water for you. Ah. Uh, and it actually also prevents waste because it's you're not boiling more water than you need. You yeah. just boil as much yeah. as you sort of cool. want. Cool. It's really cool. And and what motivates you to, to uh, because you're now working uh, uh, at Kickstarter for over a year, what motivates you to, 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 to keep working over there for, let's, uh, let's say, the next four or five years? So uh, what drives you to really uh, want to work at Kickstarter? Uh, it, it, it really is about empowering people to create things uh, in a really inclusive way. What's What's been fascinating is this shift that allows people to kind of create things that weren't possible for like, Very few of the things on Kickstarter would have been possible for individuals to create 10 years ago. No. Uh, you look at the Pebble Watch, and that's a small team of people that beat the largest companies in the world yeah, to know, producing yeah. the first <laughs> really good smart watch, yeah. right? And uh, that is kind of mind-blowing, right? Like before, you had to be Microsoft or Sony or Apple in order to do that. And now you can be a small team of people. Yeah. It's a shift that is, it's, it's gradual. Um, it's incredibly powerful, but I think we are only catching up kind of culturally and psychologically to the possibility of what can happen now. Yeah. And there's still a lot of infrastructure that kind of needs to be built to make that process easier and more accessible. And so there's just a ton of work to do. And there's. And it, you know, it's products, it's education, uh, it's just supporting people, it's encouraging them. It's a lot of different facets to helping that ecosystem grow yeah. and thrive, and that's a 
that's a challenge I would like to continue to work on for the rest of my life. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, good luck with us. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck uh, and enjoy the Netherlands. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're